Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's Tuesday, January 9th, 2018. I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Excuse me, I have a devotional for you. But first, I would like to say the Our Father. I'm not <clears throat> feeling too well today. I had um, my throat hurts a little on this side of my ear. I feel like uh, that <clears throat> flu I had is coming back. My eyes are small, and, uh, so just forgive the way I look. Um, let's see. Okay, let's start out with the hour father, and then I'll move on to the devotionals. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Okay, this is called Prompted to Discern. Now, anybody that has the gift of discernment <clears throat> will understand, truly understand this devotional because having discernment is a double-edged sword. It's the Holy Spirit inside of you that warns you against uh, demons that are inside of people and um, alerts you to them. And how does he alert you to them? Well, he'll make you feel repelled. And it doesn't have anything to do with their behavior, anything that they said, or anything that they did. You just sense it. And um, if you ignore it, that which you sense will um, alert your other senses too. You'll feel like you're in a room with a horrible smell. Like if you were in a room with dead bodies. You won't actually smell it, but your spiritual smell will compel you and eject you out of that room. Uh, I have this incredibly powerful gift. And um, I've walked away from many people that I've known all my life because I can't be in their presence. They're not, uh, they're of the world. So when they're of the world, they're filled with demons. And it's hard for somebody who's, um, been, has this gift and is um, saved and born again to be in the presence of those who are filled with demons. It's, a, it's like chalk on a, on a blackboard. It's like nails going across a table. It's just an irritation that is so powerful that you just have to leave. And uh, it is a very, very powerful gift. And what I meant by a double-edged sword is because if most of the people that are that that you that are in your life are unsaved, you're gonna become very isolated. And uh, that's what I meant by a double-edged sword. <clears throat> So uh, this is called Prompted to Discern, and the reading is from Proverbs 2.12, and it says, Wisdom will save you from evil people, from those whose words are twisted. Yeah. And when you have connections to evil people, then God will remove them from your life for you. That's a gift also, which you don't realize because... You have to break those connections to those evil people. It's painful. And if you can't walk away on your own, then he'll take them out. He's done it to me. Have you ever walked into a place and felt an unpleasant tug in your spirit? And immediately you put, put you on your guard. Have you ever spoken with someone and thought something isn't right here? If you are a believer, then most likely the Holy Spirit was prompting you to be on the alert. This is called spiritual discernment. 
and it is developed as you walk in wisdom with God. Now, this is not to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't confuse discernment with you being um, a nasty, toxic person who, because because uh, nasty, toxic people are discontent with everybody, and that's not the same as Holy Spirit discernment. That just means the person is critical and nobody's good enough for them. Don't confuse that. Don't think you have Holy Spirit discernment, okay? When you're transformed and you get this, this is the real deal. The Father wants you to be able to discern when something is amiss with a person or a situation. So the Holy Spirit either reminds you of a principle in Scripture reveals when something doesn't add up in the person's words or gives you unease in your spirit to warn you against proceeding. Whichever way he communicates with you, if you will listen to him, you will be equipped to avoid situations that could harm you. So how can you grow in wisdom and spiritual discernment? Well, first become intimately familiar with the word of God. Well, first you need to be born again because you won't be able to understand the word of God. When you're not born again and you read the Bible, it doesn't make any sense. You can't understand the Bible and you can't communicate with the Father. Only through Jesus Christ can you do that. So that's one thing you have to do first. The better you know scripture, the better equipped you'll be to separate the truth from fiction. Yeah, fact from fiction. You can read about that in Hebrews 5, 14. Second, pay close attention when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. God has placed his spirit in you so that you can have the most intimate relationship possible with him. Do not ignore his promptings. Instead, ask, quote, Lord, what are you trying to show me? Unquote. God gave you a discerning spirit because he wants to protect you. You could read about that in Philippians 1, 9, 10. So when you encounter people, messages, or circumstances that don't sit right in your spirit, stop and listen for his voice. Certainly, like a bright beacon on a dark night, he will illuminate the situation for you and show you whether or not to proceed. Absolutely. And um, a prayer we can say is, Father, thank you for protecting me through your Holy Spirit. As I walk with you, please increase my wisdom in spiritual discernment and help me always to listen to your promptings. Yeah, you know, my my discernment is so powerful, all glory to God, that um, the demons that are in other people become aware that I can see them. See? Especially if I've been familiar with their demons. Like, uh, you all know that I have uh, um, uh, the glutton demons, right? So I'm familiar with them, and I know everything that they do. I know how they get around and all of that. And I know how they trick and, um, and um, operate spiritually to fool you into getting you to do what they want you to do. Now, remember, these are disembodied spirits so in order for them to fulfill themselves they need cooperation of a person see that opens the door if you cooperate with them they can come in you let them in and then they can have their way through your flesh and um, I'll give you the example with eating now one day this was many years ago I pulled into a Dunkin Donuts to get a coffee 
So I get my coffee and I'm sitting in my car drinking it and there's this really overweight woman sitting in the car next to me. And she's eating, she's got donuts in a bag. And she's eating these donuts, you know, with delight and savoring every bite. Like I could feel the demon in her just going to town on this donut. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, just sitting there. Every now and then I would glance over and look. And um, one time I glanced over and I looked and her demon knew that I saw the demon. And that woman turned like this with the donut in her mouth. And she went like that to me. And see, <laughs> if you are not spiritual, you would just think that that woman was saying to me, what are you looking at? You know, get a life, right? But no, that demon, see, was protecting its territory that demon i shined the light on that demon and that demon got enraged because it was using that woman's vessel to act out gluttony and that's what demons do if you have a sex demon it'll it'll get into you and use your body to uh to fulfill the lust of the demon if you cooperate with it see it's all about resisting and it's the hardest thing to do to resist these things same thing with drinking same thing with drugs same thing with pornography same thing with gambling it's all the same everything is the same these demons have a particular thing that they want to fulfill and they can't because they don't have a body. So they need the cooperation of a human being. Okay. And these things are in us. And when we get saved and these things are in us, we become a new man. We become a new person. Okay. And the old person with the demons falls off and things change. Holy Spirit enters in. And, um, you know, if there's Holy Spirit inside and you stay in this sin, you're going to be an awful lot of conflict. Okay. Because the Holy Spirit is what puts enmity between you and the demon. So that there's a war that takes place inside you. And people that don't have Christ... They can continue on eating until a 600 pound life, okay? They can continue drinking without conflict until their liver gets cirrhosis and they die, okay? I mean, what, like I said in the other video, we're all going to die of something, okay? But when we're born again, the Lord comes in and the Holy Spirit is really a tool it, to empower us to throw these things off, not from what we do from ourselves, but from the conflict, the conviction that the Holy Spirit gives us when these things try to take up residence. There's no room when the Holy Spirit is in there. And then they try to take up residence, they're tormenting you, okay? You're going to be tormented and if you're not tormented, you have to question your salvation. Because when Holy Spirit is in there, you don't want to offend the Holy Spirit. It's holy. Jesus would never be okay with you destroying your vessel. Because if he's in there, he's got to use you. Don't forget, if you're not born again, then Satan's using you in the world. But if you're born again, then Jesus needs to use you. You've committed your life to Jesus to be used. How could he use you if you're falling apart? See, doesn't make any sense. So uh, when Holy Spirit comes in, yeah, he puts enmity in you. And um, you will hate what your body does. You will hate the things that you do. 
and you'll have to turn to him for help, Holy Spirit for power. Until you turn to Holy Spirit and use your power and assert your rights over that demon, you're going to be in hell, in your head, and in your body. Okay. <clears throat> and um, this next one is called, I love this one. It's, uh, hmm. Okay, it's called A Father to Us. And the reading is from Proverbs 1 8. And it says, Here, my son, your father's instruction. Uh, the authority and wisdom of Jesus' teaching astounded the Jews of his day. His miracles of healing and control over nature's forces awed the disciples and bystanders alike. But there was nothing more stunning to his audience than the, his constant reference to God as Father. How could anyone claim such intimacy with the Lord? Yet Jesus wanted us to understand an important aspect of the life he offers us. Being Christians means that we enjoy a special, eternal family relationship with the creator of all that exists. Although once estranged from God by sin, when we accept Christ as Savior, we are adopted into his household and indwelt by the Holy Spirit so that we can interact with our Heavenly Father. Um, no other religion offers this profoundly personal transformative relationship. It's, astound, it's an astounding privilege. And I say it all the time. I am just so honored that I'm able to converse with the Father. And to people that don't know the Lord that aren't saved, when you talk to them, you're just so used to saying, well, you know, the Father told me this, and the Father said that, and the Father's not happy with that. You know, they think you're like, you know, um, wearing a tinfoil hat. But when you've been walking with the Lord for years, and you're communicating with the Father, it's natural to say these things. But to people that don't know him, you look like a loon. Instead of being distant, disappeasable, or impersonal, impersonal, your God works to have a relationship with you. One where you can experience growth, healing, unconditional love, and complete acceptance. When you pray, your Father hears you and he delights in giving you good gifts. You can read about that in James 1, 17. Yeah, he hears you. Um, that's why people come to other people that pray a lot. Because when you're in the body of Christ and you have that intimate relationship, the Lord hears your prayers. But when you're not born again and you're not saved, the Lord doesn't, he doesn't answer the prayers of the unsaved. Doesn't hear them. His objective is to lead you into a productive, meaningful life and to free you from distracting worry and draining fears. You could read about that in Matthew 6, 24 to 34. And when you sin or you make mistakes, he disciplines for your good so that you can be free. You can read about that in Hebrews 12, 7 to 11. You are a child of the living God and have a, a heavenly father who is completely trustworthy, wise, and able to lead you. So don't doubt him if things turn rough. Except your heavenly father is teaching you valuable lessons that will ultimately help you reach your full potential. And a prayer we can say is, Lord, thank you for the astounding privilege of knowing you as my father and i praise you for raising me up as your own amen this is what you miss in the catholic church this is what it's life itself that you miss imagine the creator of the universe 
speaking to you personally, giving you instruction, loving you, correcting you, laughing with you, blessing you, knowing that you could go to him no matter what you've done. Okay, instead of sitting there shivering in your boots with death all around you. That's what it was like in there. Listen, you have to be, when you're on both sides, when you've been on both sides, you can see these things. It's kind of like when you, I'm talking to people that don't get it because you haven't been on both sides yet. It's as if your parents were telling you something and you're resisting them, thinking that you know better. And they lived longer than you have, and they've been there because they had to go through adolescence, puberty, and up into young adulthood. And they, so they know, but you don't think that they know. You won't take their word for it. You're going to be rebellious and do your own thing and defy your parents, and you'll break God's rules. But that's what happens as sitting in the Catholic Church is that you are being denied all of this glory from the Lord. I can't say it any better than I just said it. So, you know, don't miss out. There isn't anything that you could have done that the Lord cannot forgive you for. And if you want to have all these blessings poured out upon you, I'm not talking about the Joel Oldstein ministries and all of this prosperity stuff. Okay, the Lord gives you as you need. You will be content. You will be uh, abundant. You will be overflowing. Okay. And the Lord knows your heart. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you need. He wants to please you, but you have to please him first. Okay. And the only way you could do that is to come to him and make him first. Put him before everything. Okay. And he'll lead you to, through life, surrounding you with his protection and his glory. And you will live a holy life. Okay? Just follow along. I have a video following this one. Just come with a sincere heart with humility. Follow along. And you will join into the body of Christ. And you will be able to speak to the Holy Father. Through our, everything that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. You have to believe that that blood from Christ is on the altar in heaven. And that blood is what washes every person who comes to him and believes on him. Believes that he died for their sins and the sins of the world. Okay. And believes that he resurrected on the third day. Okay. You can't. First, the first step in becoming a born again Christian is that you have to hear the words. You have to hear the gospel, which is what I'm saying to you. Okay. And the second step is that you have to believe. And the, the third step is you just confess. Okay. And you're there. It's not rocket science. Really, it, it, it happens from the heart. If you're tired of living under the conditions that you're living in, if you're tired of being ravaged by your own uh, demons, then come. Come. Come into the body of Christ. Okay? I wouldn't want to be anyplace else. It is so scary out there without the Father. Without the Father's protection. And you can have it too. Okay, I just want to say that I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. He died for you. And he's coming very, very soon. We don't have too much time. So please come. God bless.